and the more powerful CACR, or Constitutional Amendment Concurrent Resolution 25, providing that the state shall not participate in unfunded and partially funded federally mandated programs. You'd think it should be a no-brainer, huh? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, my name is uh, Representative Peter Berg, and I represent the towns of Hammer, uh, Milford, Hillsborough, District 6. Uh, I'd like to start the hearing off by reading you know, out of our Constitution, Article 28A, which some of us are familiar with being in the legislature, it always comes up when we're looking at bills that have funding in it. The state shall not mandate or assign any new, expanded, or modified programs or responsibilities to any political subdivision in such a way as to necessitate additional local expenditures. Now, this was put into effect on November 28, 1984. It came out of a constitutional convention. And since then, for 23 years, this legislature has lived up to this Article 28A in the state of New Hampshire. However, unfortunately, our federal government has not lived up to uh, their act that they passed in 1996, which was uh, the Unfunded Mandate Reform Act, which was supposed to uh, be similar to our Article 28A. And since that time, uh, we've had the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, Homeland Security, the Real ID part of it. Uh, this legislature and the executive branch last year overwhelmingly uh, turned down the real ID, and one of the reasons for it was, that an, un was an unfunded mandate of $55 million, which would cost the state of New Hampshire to implement that program. We have had no child left behind. We have uh, special ed. It's about time a state takes a stand and lets the federal government know that, look, enough's enough. My name is Representative Cynthia Dockmo. I'm also from Hillsborough 6 and I'm here as a co-sponsor of this bill. What I think this bill is trying to say is, if the federal government thinks these programs are so great that they force us to do them, then pay for it. Finally, in front of the Judiciary Committee, is HB 1543 relative to the citizens' petition for redress of grievances by the legislature. Co-sponsor, Representative Dan Itza, could you give us a uh, thumbnail sales pitch for HB 1543? It's my right and I want it now. Thank you. <laughs> a, a bill hearing is a, is a hearing on a solution. A grievance is a hearing of the problem. I have submitted House Bill 1543 because, again, I have been studying the Constitution and the history of the state. This was last in our laws in 1925, and then in the next uh, uh, recodification, it was simply dropped. It was not incorporated. It, it wasn't that it was removed. There, were, there was no bill introduced to, to remove these, these uh, issues of due process. Uh, there was no public hearings. It was simply in the recodification, to be generous, they forgot. And so the due process uh, regarding redress of grievances disappeared from our statute. If we can hear the redress of grievances, we hear the problem. And that leaves it up to us to craft and what we believe to be the appropriate solution. It's a different way of doing business, but it is actually the way of business that we were designed for. And so despite the fact that we have this uh, positive right, one of the few positive rights in our Constitution, uh, not a, not a uh, uh, protection that the government can't do something, but a positive right that the people can do something. The people do not have the mechanism to be heard. And to, to put it in vernacular, you can't get there from here. If a person has a complaint it cannot be introduced into the legislature, even though they have the positive right to have that introduced and heard by us. It means that a person does not have to pay or hire a lawyer to have their grievance against the government, the grievances they suffer, heard by the government. It means that the people as a body, who are the 
since they ratify the Constitution and it's all its amendments and are the rightful arbiters of the Constitution, it means that their grievances are heard by the body, their grievances against the government are heard by the body over which they have control. The town uh, had a much higher interest that they were trying to protect and they got the, the courts to act as their surrogates and, uh, and wound up uh, taking advantage of me. And I, I, for one, was excited about the fact that I might have the possibility of be, being able to come before this body and have my case uh, redressed uh, without the, the, somebody grinding down into the minutia of some case and deciding, oh, we're going to not hear your your uh, matter because, well, you didn't file it on the right day or you didn't quote the right law. Or I'm hoping you guys would be in a position to look at a much bigger picture and see that, gee, here's somebody who really has been hurt, whose rights have been trampled on, and uh, we can set this matter straight. Well, what I'm getting at is there's already a, a system in the works and uh, this is a good bill because it sets up a statutory mandate of what has to be done. It does say here in Article 31, the legislature shall assemble for the redress of public grievances. I have gone to the courts, I have gone to the Judicial Conduct Committee. There is no Judicial Conduct Committee in this state. It is a committee to protect the judges. My daughter has been harmed, and I have been harmed, due to lack of due process, absolute brazen disregard for the law, the Constitution, public policy, and Supreme Court of the United States rulings. The, the right. bill means I need my ability to redress grievance with the House of Legislature. The bill for redress of grievance is necessary, it's a must, it's my right. We have no way of dealing with the judicial branch. We don't elect them. At least if I come to my House of Representatives, they might be able to get my daughter out of the fire that she's in. But the tone of my voice is confusing. I want you to know that I'm not angry. I'm scared and I'm very sad. My little girl is suffering tremendously. There is no recourse with the judicial branch of the government. They are running amok. I'm begging this court and this committee to grant this wish and enact the bill for redress of grievance and vote for it. It's a must. The courts in New Hampshire are broken. They are very badly broken. The people are more frustrated than they've ever been in, I guess, the 200 plus years of this, this great union. They don't have a place to go if they can't go to their own court system. Now, when you pass this bill, and I know you will pass this bill, because it's the only course of action you can give the people of this state. It's the only right thing to do. When you do pass this bill, it's going to be sending a great message to all the local governments. You can't continue to do what you've been doing. Which is to sit there and say, if you don't like it, and believe me, this is the attitude prevailing out there, sue us. Because they know that they'll be protected by the courts. The first is, I think what we're seeing here is standard economics as pent up consumer demand. I do believe that what we're seeing today is an overcorrection for an underserved market. It's a simple matter of allowing people to bring in air of grievance in a way that doesn't have to involve the courts and in all that entails. Is there anyone who has not, to this, to this point, filed a pink card who would wish to testify on this? No? Seeing no one, I would close the public hearing on House Bill 1543. We will be in recess later for 10 minutes. Feeling feisty yet? Want to participate? Have your say? The LOB is waiting. <laughs>